everybody. So this talk is actually related to the talk you heard before because apart from the fact that I'm going to be talking about GraphQL, um, the, um, the system is the same. So we are also doing asynchronous calls and we're going to store them in a Redux store, the results of them. But myself, um, I'm Mike Langmeier. I work at BT and it's an awesome company and we've been doing React for a number of years now. Glad I joined here. <laughs> and <laughs> um, the basic um, React and GraphQL stack that people are used to is that um, this is how it was introduced in January of 2015. Um, it was basically React and GraphQL and Relay as like the, the link that basically it's a client um, caching layer that basically stores the um, results that you get from GraphQL and it lets you query those results in a declarative way. The only thing that changed since then is Redux became pretty popular um, and I want to explain why a lot of people in the community are replacing Redux, uh, replacing Relay with Redux now. It's good. And it looks like this for a lot of people who work with GraphQL these days. So what is GraphQL? GraphQL is a lot of things actually. It's a, it's a whole framework, um, but mostly it's a data querying language um, that is based on JSON. Um, it is server-side technology. So if you want to make use of GraphQL, you need to have a server that um, supports it. But there's support for all the big server-side technologies for <coughs> Java, Ruby, PHP, even Node, so you name it. Um, Facebook invented it because um, it had a lot of um, problems with um, calls using React on mobile devices and React Native. So it was looking for a solution where it has, has to make the minimum number of calls and get exactly the data out that it wants. So not more data and then trim it down in the client because that's inefficient. And this is, can you guys read this? Because this is what the syntax of GraphQL looks like. It's basically JSON. And when you make a request, you basically give, um, a JSON object with an ID and the, param um, the properties that you want. And the response is the same object, including the values. So it's very simple and for every JavaScript developer, really familiar. Um, advantages of GraphQL are that you only need a single endpoint. So everybody who has had the experience where you have a front end team and a back end team working together and the front end team needs a new set of data and the backend team has to write an API. This whole thing would be cut out in this scenario. So you can basically query all the data that you need from the server in the, in the client, which is really great if you're a front end developer. Um, you can um, specify exactly what data you want. So you can do inside the client, you can say, I only want this set of properties, you can do pagination much easier, and you never have that situation where you get way too much data from the server and then you have to filter it or something like that. You always get exactly what you want. Um, Co-location of queries and the view code is something that is useful um, if you um, manage the data. So I have an example here. I'm not, again, I hope you can read this. Um, so it's basically, you use um, in the, the lower section, there's a bit of JSX there. So you basically write out the username and in the top section, you request the username. So if you would need any other property from the user, you would just add another property and request it and it's that easy. So I think that is a pretty good um, thing that speaks for GraphQL. Then Relay is what I mentioned earlier. It is um, that framework that Facebook originally um, sought out to be used for GraphQL. And it's a whole 
Um, it's a data fetching framework. It does more than just um, request the GraphQL data for you. It also caches it for you. And it is inspired by Flux. So when Relay was um, created, there were still a lot of Flux implementations that had multiple stores and all those problems. And so people thought, why don't we make a solution where we have one single store, kind of like Redux is now, um, but just for server-side um, data. Um, uses container pattern, so um, whenever you want to hook up a React component with data, you basically create a relay container and tell the container um, what kind of data it wants and then put all the components inside. Um, yeah, components are re-rendered when data changes. I think a lot of people are used to that from Flux anyways. And that's a bit of a caveat that it's only for server data. So it's not like a Flux store where you can just put anything inside and manipulate it whenever you want to. It is um, those declarative queries that you use to query the server. It's the same way you query the relay store. And the relay store will decide for itself if it needs to query the server or if it gives you a cached version. Um, and it works mostly with React. So whereas um, Redux is um, independent from frameworks, at least in theory, um, Relay has mostly been used with um, React. And there are some projects that try to use it elsewhere, but I don't think they have gotten very far from what I've been seeing. Then what is Redux? And does anybody here use Redux um, professionally? That's still quite a good number, yeah. So it's good. I think I love Redux. I'm glad it's spreading. Um, so it's basically um, an implementation of Flux, but it just uses one store. It basically uses um, reducers to take all the stores that you used to have in the Flux pattern and reduce them into, into parts of one store object makes it really nice to see what state your application is in at the moment. Um, it ha it um, is encouraged to use a container presentation components pattern where you have some components that basically look nice and do the things you want and container components that are linked to data. Um, yeah, it has great React integration, of course but you can use Redux in Angular 2, for example, and in other JavaScript frameworks. And this is a graphic how Redux typically works, where you have the Redux store, and then you have the view component, and it dispatches an action, and then um, it goes to the reducer, and then back into the store, and the store re-renders the component. So pretty much like Flux anyways. And this is how it would look like if you used GraphQL um, with Redux. So you would use an asynchronous library, one um, like Chris mentioned earlier, I'm using Redux Sunk at the moment. And all you do is you um, start a um, asynchronous call, but to a GraphQL endpoint, and you send your GraphQL query, and then the response that comes back, you reduce it and put it in the Redux store and um, re-render your components. And caveats, there, there are some of course, as I mentioned earlier, like Relay is more than just um, a data fetching framework, it's a cache. So you're missing out on the caching that Relay does. Um, Relay has some really cool features for example, if you want to do pagination, it does that out of the box. If you don't um, use it, you're missing out on that too. Relay has really good React integration, but I mentioned that earlier. There are projects like um, Cache, for example, which is a, a client-side um, GraphQL cache, which does a lot of the things that um, Relay does. I don't think it's a, as advanced yet, but I'm sure it will get there as I think the community is moving to use Redux instead of Relay. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>